Grady Nutt, a native of Jacksonville, Texas, and a graduate of Baylor University, is a minister by ordination, professional entertainer by occupation, writer by avocation, graduate of Southern Theological Seminary by matriculation, and finder, enjoyer, proclaimer of all things funny by inclination. Grady and his wife, Eleanor, and their two sons, Perry and Toby, live in Louisville, Kentucky, helping people be honest with life, friends, and God. In Pinocchio, Grady approaches the gospel in a fresh, new way. I was cruising across New Mexico this summer, and a most unusual thing to happen to me. My wife and family looked at the map, and they saw that there was one curve out near Portales, New Mexico, so they took Dramamine. <laughs> My family are basically chicken to the hilt. And so here were my wife and children snoozing in the car. Well, they don't really snooze. They just sort of pass out, you know. And uh, I love the radio in my car. I have a stereo radio, and I turn this thing on. It's got speakers around me, and I just sort of sit there and... And I'm cruising across New Mexico, and out in the middle of mesquite boonies, you know, just the boondocks full of mesquite. Man, there it was, miles of nothing, just... Desolate, barren, lonely country. I hear the fifth dimension singing their great hymn to individuality, Puppet Man. If you want to see me do my thing, pull my string, you know, and they were almost amen in that thing. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm patting so hard the car's lurching, you know, just, you got to pat with your left foot if you've got a good stereo radio so boom 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 and I kept hitting the dimmer and uh, officer pulls me over what are you dimming for I says puppet man <clears throat> you know he, uh, what's your name buddy I said you're not going to believe this <laughs> and, uh, he uh, kind of blows his noodle but I'm sitting here you know listening to the song puppet man it's really not light at uh, night it's daytime and I'm coming across the country just thinking quietly and all of a sudden in my mind right out in front of me as it were leaves one of my favorite all-time characters Pinocchio <laughs> probably the most famous puppet in the world right and Pinocchio stood there in the roads you know sort of giving me the school crossing guard signal in my mind and I slowed up and looked and I listened there was Pinocchio here was puppet man working on the stereo I'm thinking puppet I'm thinking puppet man and the story began to run around in my brain I gnawed on it for two weeks like a dog jealous of his bone you know I, this idea was just back here and fertiling around you know just zipping out little things like an amoeba grabbing for ideas and I'm letting it just sort of grow two weeks go by I show up on the college at college campus at Berry College in Rome, Georgia. Spend a week with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes at one of their conferences. The idea stayed on my back like a panther in the jungle. <laughs> you know, I couldn't shake it, you know, and I, puppet man, Pinocchio. So I went over to the college library at Berry College, finally, and I went into the lady at the library desk, you know, and I said, hello. <laughs> she said, hello. <laughs> Fell out a card. Punch the zero. Two weeks. You get any books you want. I said, "Whoa!" <clears throat> now just. And she slowed off her recorder. You know, I said, "What?" <laughs> and she pantomimes that thing at the desk. But she pushes it on. So I asked her if they had a children's section in the library, and she said, "Certainly." And so I said, uh, "Could you aim me toward it?" She said, "Yes, downstairs to your left." And I found it. Turned the light on, and here was the children's section at the college library. So I went in and checked the card catalog, found Pinocchio. He'd just been turned in three weeks late by a graduate student. Um, and about the only other people that had checked it out the last two years had been professors. <clears throat> so, uh, but I began thumbing through it, walked out on the campus. It was late afternoon, about 30 minutes before supper. 
and I was to meet my family and friends for dinner in about half an hour. So I sat down under a tree. The guys are walking by slowly at these FCA conferences. They play football and basketball all day, you know, and softball and they're competing. And about this time of the afternoon, it really gets lazy. Everybody's showered and washed the day off of him, and he's heading toward chow. So here are guys walking down the sidewalks in their new Adidas. Uh, I'm sitting out there under a big tree reading Pinocchio. <laughs> Unashamedly reading Pinocchio. I figure, man, you're going to leap out in front of me in New Mexico. I'm going to learn about you. So I sat down and I opened the book and I... <laughs> and I want you to know that it was one of the most moving moments in my life as a Christian. All of a sudden, I saw biblical images just flow into this thing like a glider coming down, gently. They just floated the shore. And I'm sitting there reading this thing, and the more I read, the more intense I got. I really kind of got for where I was, you know, tears rolling down my cheeks. It's, man, it's really got me, you see. And somebody walking by says, what you reading, Grady? I said, <coughs> uh, poetry, <coughs> But I really didn't care, because that story got hold of me, sold me some things about myself. And if you will let me, I'd like to walk you back through it, the movie, the Walt Disney, the little golden book version. I'm not going to take you through 66 adventures like it was originally written, but take you through the story as most of us recall it, <clears throat> and see if perhaps the Imperial's record jacket may not become a mirror. When you have found truth in any form, then anymore, you have discovered just one chapter in a greater story. Let's look at this chapter. Pinocchio. You open it, the first two pages. Geppetto is carving Pinocchio, sanding and buffing and working on him. Paints the eyes, puts on the little eyebrows, screws on the nose, ties on the string puts his hat in place and kicks the feather to one side and then begins to dance him around. You know. And Pinocchio is dancing around the floor. Two times, the first two pages, Geppetto says, Oh, how I wish Pinocchio were a real live boy. Now, if you've got ears to hear, that's a clue, friends. <laughs> a clue. And I got images here of God kneeling by a river bank and molding a man out of mud and blowing life up his nose and turning him loose on the world. Named him Adam and told him to take care of his creation. Geppetto, how I wish Pinocchio were a real live boy. You know, and I'm sitting here already. I've been thinking about it two weeks before I get into it. See, and boy, already I'm starting to cloud up. My contact's floating off my cheek, you know, <laughs> catching this thing on. So here I go with Pinocchio. Turn the page. Everybody in the household is so excited because Geppetto has created a puppet. And Geppetto takes all of this father longing, how I wish Pinocchio were a real live boy, my real live boy. And he took all of that feeling. And as he dances him, Figaro the cat, Cleo the goldfish, Jiminy the cricket are all just woo-ha. It's hallelujah time. Night grows older, and Geppetto puts Pinocchio up on the workbench. And he sits there all night, like Kingfish and Amos and Andy, when he said he was going to retire and do nothing slowly. <laughs> just sitting there. Geppetto walks over to the window and throws it open, looks out, sees the evening star in the distance, and prays that probably most familiar prayer in the world outside of our Lord's. <laughs> Starlight, star bright, first star I've seen tonight. Mm, wish I may. How I wish Pinocchio were a real live boy. Three times in four pages. Clue, clue, clue. Taps into the sack. Big girl curls up on the foot of the bed. Cleo the goldfish floats to the bottom of the bowl, one bubble an hour. 
Jiminy Cricket kicks his hat to one side, crosses his legs, and puts his umbrella across, and sits in the windowsill, kind of lazy-like, watching the night. Night was made for crickets. After everybody has soothed it down, old Jiminy looks up in the distance, and he sees the evening star twinkle, and then it twinkles again. Then it moves closer. <laughs> And closer. And it's really Judy bling bling bling. You know, there it comes. And he's shaking his head and right into the room. <laughs> and you hear the sound that you hear when you walk through those little glass Chinese bells people hang in their dining room doorways, you know. <laughs> and right out in the room, da dum dum, it's the blue fairy. <laughs> Sometimes I don't comment on these stories, I just tell them like they are. <clears throat> the blue fairy. Holding her wand, she walks straight across the room to the workbench where Pinocchio is doing that thing slowly. In response to Geppetto's prayer, she comes to touch him with her wand. And Pinocchio's eyes blink, and his neck moves, and his strings disappear. And he moves and touches himself. And the blue fairy says to him, Pinocchio, in response to Geppetto's prayer, I have come to give you life. But with your courage, you must earn the right to be a real live boy. She turns to Jiminy Cricket. He's standing there. And she says, now, Jiminy, you shall be his conscience. Keep him out of the bad and in the good, you know. Jiminy makes the typical response of those given that kind of responsibility. <clears throat> Will I get a medal? And she only smiles at him. Put that in parenthesis. We'll come back. She disappears. The next morning, Geppetto awakens. He hears clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop. And he looks. And here comes Pinocchio. Good grief. No strings. Walking. The first words of Pinocchio really got me. Good morning, Father. Hmm. And it was that sort of touching moment, the answer to an old man's prayer, off the strings and into his arms, here was a puppet, life, what he had longed for, for that puppet. And you talk about jubilation in somebody's household. <laughs> they all got with it. Man, the goldfish was leaping and doing backflips, Figaro, Jiminy, and Pinocchio and Geppetto were doing a square dance in a circle. Yeah, you can do that. And, you know... Everybody's hitting it. And in the middle of this kind of excitement, everything is just percolating, you know. All of a sudden, Geppetto stops, looks at his watch, walks across the room, packs a lunch, gets some books together, gives them to Pinocchio, and sends him to school. A dirty trick to pull on a new kid. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Pinocchio walks out to make his first trip over cobblestones. Trip, trip, trip. And... Then Geppetto turns and has the same feelings about Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy, you go with him and keep him in the good and out of the bad. Jiminy says, da 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 and goes with him. Down the street, they go, Jiminy and Pinocchio. Two blocks from the house, Pinocchio without strings, walking along at a wooden gate, you see. Uh, interesting little play on words there. Uh, walking along at this sort of clumsy wooden gate is tripped up by J. Worthington Fowlfellow, the evil fox. And you just hear Dragnet in the back of this, da dum dum you know. The evil fox trips him, splat, puppet without strings. Wow, fantastic opportunity. The deal, he'll sell him to Stromboli, the puppeteer who travels around the country giving magic and puppet shows. And he says to Pinocchio, in order to trick him, he says, Pinocchio, if you'll go to work for Stromboli, this fantastic puppeteer... You will become rich and famous. Now watch those two points, rich and famous. That has ever been two of our primary problems. Pinocchio says, wow, rich and famous. He said, that's right, man, travels all over the world. You'll just get to be known all over creation. They'll think you're something else. Jiminy Cricket keeps tugging with his umbrella on a buttonhole. You know, Pinocchio, Pinocchio, he says, Pinocchio, Pinocchio, he says, shut And you'll see the castles of Spain and... Well, wow, Pinocchio says, I'll go, I'll do it. And Jiminy Cricket says, Pinocchio, don't do it. And he said, shut up, Cricket. 
Little C Cricket. Interesting how your little C Crickets or your big C Crickets become little C Crickets when you're going to do what you want to do. And so he completely goes against the advice of his good conscience, takes off, goes to work for Stromboli. He is not rich and famous. Within just two hours, he has discovered he's a prisoner in a bird cage in the back of the traveling trailer, brought out to be shown off and hidden away again. You don't have to feed a wooden puppet. All you've got to do is keep him in his place till it's time for him to do his thing. And so Pinocchio, after several days of heartbreak and despair, trying to do what he's encouraged to do out on the stage without strings, is sobbing one night in the birdcage, and the dump dump it's the blue fairy. It's <laughs> into the trailer. Pinocchio, why didn't you go to school like you were told? <clears throat> well, uh, see, what really happened was, and he started to lie, and his nose started to go east. <laughs> you know, birds out there saying, tweet, tweet, good morning. <laughs> So he tells the truth and his nose comes back. That would force me into honesty also. Just get a little hickey on my nose and I get honest, you know. Go that far, I'm really going to straighten up. And so she says to Pinocchio, now I'm going to get you out of here and I want you to get straight home. And you listen to your father and you obey him and don't you dare let this happen again. Do you hear me? Now you've all heard your mother talk to you that way. Do you hear me? Right? Okay. <laughs> Works a miracle. Ta -dum, out of the deal. Onto the ground with the cricket. Ta -dum, ta -dum, ta -dum, ta -dum, down the road. Headed for home. Hard as he can go. If you'll let it, the story of the prodigal son will just sort of settle on this like late October frost. Gently. Down the road to Geppetto's house. As he races along, he's spotted one more time by Jay Worthington Fowlfellow, the evil fox. <laughs> Trips him up, splat. <clears throat> sees that he's gotten away, sees a chance to sell him again before Stromboli finds him. He knows about the evil coachman on Pleasure Island, where you can go and uh, be treated to real fun and festivity for about five days, and then you become a donkey due to the evil coachman's workmanship, and you're sold to the coal mines to haul little coal cars up out of the deep, uh, deep of the earth. Okay, Pinocchio doesn't know this, but he says to Pinocchio, Oh, my friend, in his best W.C. Fields fashion, I see that you are out of uh, Stromboli's employ. He says, well, yes, he was terrible. Listen, Mr. Fox, he was just awful. He just, you know, he says, well, listen, my boy. And he goes into his routine to tell him about Pleasure Island. He says, what you need is a little rest and relaxation. Pleasure Island is just for boys like you. All you've got to do is go over there, get on the island, and they'll let you have all the jello and ice cream that you want. You chop up chairs with hatchets. You can just have a blast. He says, Pleasure Island. He said, that's right. Ooh, I'd love to go. I said, Pinocchio, he, you know, he says, hmm, that's Jiminy Cricket. He says, Pinocchio, don't do it. Listen, listen to him. He says, shut up, Cricket. When you're going to do what you want to do, hmm. off to Pleasure Island. There he is out on the island. His closest friend, Lampwick. I, I've always thought that would be such a cool first name for me, Lampwick Nut. You know, <laughs> da-dum-dum. But anyhow, here was Lampwick. Pinocchio's best buddy, they're talking to one another one day. All of a sudden, Lampwick's ears go donkey style. <laughs> His nose comes out. He begins to bray like a donkey, grows a tail like a donkey. Pinocchio is startled. And about that time, a rope lashes out of the air <laughs> around the little donkey's neck. And now Lampwick is hauled off to the coal mines. And down the road he goes, screaming and fighting, trying to keep his feet on the ground. Pinocchio starts to call for help, and all of a sudden he's aware of a change in himself. He has a tail like a donkey, he has ears like a donkey, and then he sees the coachman with his rope, and Pinocchio heads for the cliff and the bay, just as hard as he can run, between boulders and stumps, and blah, 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 over, splash, Jiminy Cricket hanging on his coattail, and out on the bank on the far side, and now he is racing for Geppetto's house, and this time, if you'll let it, the story of the prodigal son will get on it like a Dakota blizzard. At the front door, <laughs> no sound inside. Can't even hear the goldfish splash. And while he's standing there puzzled, where could Geppetto be? A white dove flies up with a note in her beak, hands it to Pinocchio. You never question fairy tales, you just believe, you know? 
Pinocchio tears the note open. He reads, Geppetto has written. He says, Pinocchio, when you didn't return, I went to search for you. I was out with Cleo and Figaro, and we were rowing across the bay to search for you. When we were eaten by Monstro the whale, and I'm writing you this note from the belly of Monstro. We don't have much food and much air left. We cannot be here long. I have loved you with all my heart. Take care of your loving father, Geppetto. Now, how that note got out of a whale by dove, I'll never know. Isn't that nice about fairy tales? You don't ever have to question. You just believe. Pinocchio sees the predicament that Geppetto's in. He says, I've got to go rescue him. And uh, Jiminy Cricket says, Pinocchio, you can't get him out of that whale. He says, but I've got to try. And you can just sort of hear the orchestra begin in the movie right there, you know. Boom, boom. Courage is beginning to percolate like Maxwell House. You see. And you listen, man, and here it comes, and the lid on the kettle is starting to go clang, 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 and there it comes. Boy, it's building courage, starting to grow for the first time. Old Pinocchio, I got to try it. And the blue fairy says, hooray. She's really the dove, but you knew that. And she grows to the size of an eagle, and Pinocchio climbs aboard, and they fly out to the bluff, and she says, now, Monstro the Whale is in that bay. Pinocchio says, I will see you later, into the bay, and now he is searching for Monstro the Whale, blip, and he's trying to find him, blip, blip. Doesn't take you long to find the whale if he's anywhere close. And there's Monstro, sound asleep, his eyes are closing. <clears throat> there he lies. Pinocchio sneaks up in the water. You can do that real cool, you know. Or you go. But he gets in closer. About that time, a passing school of fish go by, and the waves tickle Monstro's nose. And he raises one big eye, biggest eye you ever saw. And he sees a passing supper that he didn't have to swim for, you see, so he just... And there they go, man. But Pinocchio comes from around the corner in the suction, down the drain, man. There he is in there, fishing, get off, fishing. Now it's in the dark, you see, he can't see anything. He's walking around, it's kind of rough on the tongue, you know. He's just walking, and can't find, he's like, bam, right in the face, he hits that big thing and hangs down in the throat, you know. <laughs> Wipes his face off and pushes that over, you know, and gets back. Now, you think what it'd be like going down a whale's throat. You just think about that. You don't just go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, you, boy, it's tough. And he gets down in there, all these old ribs are scratching, you know, and he's moving slowly down through the throat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then he sees a light way off in the little tiny light, way down there. So he gets in closer, closer, and all of a sudden, way down in the whale. There he sees Geppetto sitting on a bench over a fire, warming his hands. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And the whale thought, the whale thought he just had too much acid, you know. <laughs> and there's this little fire, you know, just down there going, you know, old whale going. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pinocchio comes along, you hear him trip over a rib with his wooden foot, clatter, you know. <laughs> and so Geppetto looks up, you know, ah, and... That's when I started crying on the campus at Berry College, was when I saw Geppetto leap up and... Hug Pinocchio. And man, here they came. I, you know, I just, I felt so deeply here. A father's heart for his returning son. And he reached out and held him in his arms, and he says, Oh, Pinocchio, why did you come? And Pinocchio says, Father, I had to come. And as he hugs him, he opens his eyes, and he sees his ears hanging down, you know, donkey ears. And he says, Oh, Pinocchio, what's happening? He says, well, I'm not all donkey. Now, this time the lid's just going <laughs> on that kettle and the steam's going. <laughs> it's just really up there. See, courage is out there on the front burner, man. And old Pinocchio says, I'm going to get you out of this whale. And he said, son, you don't get people out of whales. You get into whales. And he says, but I'm getting you out of this whale. And he starts looking. He finds some scrap wood. The whale thoughtfully swallowed a boat the other day. And it's dried out enough to light, you see. So they crack it over their knees and they take little pieces up behind the whale's teeth and they stick them all in his gums. <laughs> he doesn't know it. And they're putting stuff around. And then he says, okay, everybody stand back. And he gives him a hot gum. <laughs> you know. 
whale throws his mouth open and <clears throat> out into the ocean, and there they go, seeing how the whale's going, oh, 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 he's hurt, man. You would be, too. And uh, he sees them swimming to try to get away, and he says, mm-hmm, and now here he comes. And I remember seeing this in the movie, and I took my boys, and I sat between them, and I'm holding their hands. I'm saying, go, Pinocchio, go, go, you know, you know go, man. And there he was, man, just swimming like crazy. And then he looks back, and here's Geppetto. He's got the goldfish up here, you know, one arm in it, you know. Pinocchio says, you know. And he turns back to help him. And Geppetto says, go on, Pinocchio, save yourself. And he said, I can't save myself. I came to save you. Boy, that's Bible all over that one. It's like moss on an unmoving stone. And he swims back and he grabs Geppetto around the neck and in front of an approaching whale, he risks himself to one-arm him to safety. You see. And there's old Geppetto holding that goldfish bowl. Because the father loves even his little fish. In the still water they come now where the whale can't get in because he's landlocked. Into the water where it's soft and everything floats quietly to shore now out of danger. Figaro's up there slopping it all off, you know, because he's so wet. Cleo the goldfish is just lying in the bowl going blip. <laughs> he was swimming in the bowl. I don't know what he thought that helped, you know. you got to admire his courage. And Geppetto's mustache is just hanging at a long, drippy drool, you know, just, he's on his hands and knees in shallow water up to about here, just look over and there comes old Jiminy Cricket floating in on a wine cork, you know, <laughs> holding his hat, you know, and says, hello there. <laughs> and then everybody begins to look, you know. Pinocchio, Pinocchio, Pinocchio. And he comes floating in face down in the water, in the current, not moving. And it's Good Friday at Geppetto's. And he walks over and rolls that little puppet over. Long ears, long tail, wooden body. So much love. Tears me up. And up the road home with his dead puppet. He goes. Into the house, and they lay him out on the bed, and everybody kneels and do what I'm doing. And then it's tinkling glass. <laughs> but you expected that. The blue fairy. <laughs> Nobody else really heard her, but Pinocchio was lying there dead. She touched him with her wand and his eyes blinked. <clears throat> and his ears and tail were normal. I felt himself and he was flesh and blood. He didn't cheer. He looked at her and smiled. And she said, Pinocchio, with your great courage, you've earned the right to be a real boy. Geppetto lifted his head, and Figaro raised his, and Cleo opened his eyes, and Jiminy Cricket said, 
Pinocchio sat up in the bed and said, Hello, Father. And all of a sudden, I got so mad at the fifth dimension, I could have screamed. You've been lying to us through your teeth. You've been lying to us. You want to see me do my thing, pull my string, fully. You want to see me do your thing, you pull my string. You want to see me do my thing, you keep your hand off my cotton-picking string. Courage. How puppets become people. When Geppetto had his strings, he did Geppetto's thing. When Jiminy had him, he did his. When the Blue Fairy, he did hers. When Stromboli, he did his. When the Evil Coachman, his. When the Fox, his. But when Pinocchio grabbed the strings, he became a person. The Gospel is the story of how people say to this weird, mixed-up world we live in, get your hands off my strings. And nowhere is it dramatized more beautifully than in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. His parents found him at 12, and they said, Where have you been? He was confounding the elders in the temple. And they said, Come with us. And he said, But I must be about my father's business. And Mary said, Now, Jesus, you come on. He said, Get your hands off my strings. And she pondered in her heart. And in the wilderness, 40 days, 40 nights, as far as I'm concerned, it was his whole young adult struggle. Satan saying to him, oh, if you'll just turn stones into bread, they'll follow you off a cliff. If you'll leap off buildings in a single bound, you know, he said, Satan, get your hands off my cotton-picking strands. The climax comes in Gethsemane when Jesus of Nazareth knelt in the garden a la superstar and struggled. Oh God, I don't want to die. I love these people. Why? Nevertheless, that's the difference. Not my will, but thine be done. The other way to say that is, oh God, here are my strings. You want to find out what the Christian faith is about? You quit letting every passing fad in this world get hold and plague you like an organ. You get hold of the gospel and the guts of Jesus Christ and you stand and you say, get your hands off of my strings. Now that's hard work. And it takes guts. But there are some of us here that have found that to be true. And I, like Gene, am becoming a Christian. Because I'm discovering daily, i got to say, ah, uh, uh, don't you touch them. Don't you dare. And it's always war at Geppetto's house. Because somebody is tripping you and heading you for the cage when God is saying, let me have your strings. I told you to put Jiminy in parenthesis. Now let's take him out. Last page. He doesn't say anything after Pinocchio is brought to life. Just... And then the blue fairy turns to him and just touches him. And his left shoulder drops. And he looks down at the biggest metal you ever saw. King of something, at least. <laughs> you know. And old Jiminy turned it up and looked at it and then smiled at her. To a good conscience who helped a wooden head become a real boy. 
And that, my friends, is the story of the church. That's why we're here and not at the park. <laughs> it's why people meet to worship God. It means that we need each other to be Jiminy Crickets to one another. We desperately need the power that comes from friends. You've got a friend when you've got a Jiminy Cricket. And we grow and we mature and we become. Some of us tonight, I think, probably very really are wooden heads dangling on every puppeteer string that passes our way. Some of us are becoming persons. Some of us are here because we're Jiminy Cricketing some people we brought. <laughs> and it takes us all. And somehow it feels to me that God has dinty moored this story to me. And I'm trying since sitting in the grass at Barry with a children's book in my hand to say, oh God, hear my strings. Let's pray together. I'm not nearly the person I ought to be, oh God. You know that. But thank God I'm not the puppet that once I was. The puppet torn and tugged and pulled by every man's hands. I thank you for a multitude of Jiminy Crickets strewn along my path. Patient courage who have helped me to come to a deeper knowledge of your abiding love. I'm grateful for a creator who made me and gave me the capacity to respond. I'm grateful for an opportunity like tonight when you can take flour and milk and eggs and baking powder and sugar and shortening and can blend us into bread. And so whatever it is we have brought that is usable, help us to offer it to you. Some of us are eggs and some of us are flour, but all of us are essential. And may the deepest prayer of each of our hearts, oh God, be very simply, here are my strings. For we offer our prayer in your name, our favorite puppeteer.